Hey there, explorers! I'm Luna, and today we're zooming into the tiny world that makes up everything alive cells. Let's find out what cells are, what types there are, and clear up a few myths you might have heard. Cells are tiny, powerful machines, the basic units of life that make up all living things, from bacteria to plants and people. First up, let's talk prokaryotes. These are super simple cells like bacteria. No nucleus, their DNA just floats around in the cell. Then we have eukaryotes. That's you, me, and plants too. These cells are complex and have organelles like the nucleus, mitochondria, and more. Inside every cell, there's a busy team of parts working together. At the center is the nucleus, like the boss, storing DNA and giving orders. The mitochondria act as the power plants, producing energy to keep everything running. Vacuoles are the storage tanks, and they're especially big in plant cells. The cell membrane works like a security gate, deciding what comes in and out of the cell. In animal cells, lysosomes serve as the cleaning crew, breaking down waste. Only plant cells have chloroplasts, which turn sunlight into food and a tough cell wall, like armor, giving the cell extra support and shape. Next up are ribosomes. Ribosomes are the cell's tiny builders. They make proteins, which are crucial for nearly everything the cell does, from building structures to repairing damage. Some ribosomes float freely in the cytoplasm and build proteins for use inside the cell, while others attach to the rough ER and help make proteins that will be exported or sent to the cell membrane. The endoplasmic reticulum, or ER, works like the cell's factory line. It has two parts, the rough ER, which is covered in ribosomes and helps make and fold proteins, and the smooth ER, which makes lipids, fats, and detoxifies harmful chemicals. The rough ER sends the proteins it builds to the Golgi for packaging, while the smooth ER handles things like fat production and breaking down toxins. The Golgi apparatus, often called the cell's post office, is responsible for sorting, packaging, and shipping proteins and other materials made in the endoplasmic reticulum. It organizes these materials into tiny vesicles and sends them to the right places, either inside or outside the cell. Shaped like a stack of pancakes, the Golgi also modifies proteins by adding sugars or other molecules to prepare them for use. And last we have cytoplasm, the jelly-like fluid that fills the inside of a cell and surrounds all the organelles. It plays a vital role by holding these organelles in place and helping materials like nutrients and proteins move throughout the cell. In addition to providing structure, the cytoplasm is where many important chemical reactions take place, allowing the cell to function properly and stay alive. It acts as the cell's internal workspace, keeping everything organized and running smoothly. Okay, now that we've reviewed the parts of a cell, let's bust some myths that confuse a lot of students. Many people believe that only animal cells are alive or that cells only contain one part, the nucleus. But these are myths. In truth, plant cells, animal cells, and even bacteria are all considered living as long as they show the characteristics of life. Additionally, cells are complex structures made up of many different parts called organelles, each performing specific functions, much like a tiny factory with specialized workers, each with its own job. Another common misconception is that plant cells don't need mitochondria because they have chloroplasts. However, while chloroplasts make food from sunlight, mitochondria are still essential for converting that food into usable energy. Lastly, not all bacteria are bad. Some help you digest food, protect you from illness, and even assist with movement and immunity. You don't have to be a scientist yet to understand cells. You're made of trillions of them. And now you know what makes them tick. So keep exploring asking questions, and most of all, keep conquering the world through science.